This is a specific subject. It's not about design. It's not about construction. It's about how to get your building permit approval fast and how can using in our new way facilitate that in addition to adding a new dimension which actually characterize uh, the new way. Any type of projects would have to go through the building permit process in order to be authorized or approved by the municipality. My name is Sam Laika Shukur. I'm an architect, a member of the Ontario Association of Architects, also a member of the Alberta Association of Architects, Architecture Institute of British Columbia, and also Royal Institute of British Architects. I'm a certified passive house designer and a member of the Royal Architectural Institute of Canada. What we are about to explain in this short webinar, I hope it's short so that you get, don't get bored and get the maximum value out of it, is the new way to start your building permit application. It can save you time and money while initiate a creative solution. And this is something, this is key for, for me, a creative solution. This is the new dimension that is added to the, to the new way, which is the zoning review. In this webinar, I would like to prove that zoning review makes your process faster and your solution more innovative. Innovation is a surprisingly valuable solution to an old problem. Surprisingly valuable solution to an old or existing problem. Everybody looks at the problem and they keep using the same old solution for it. The innovation solution, however, is a surprise that adds value a new approach. And I'm trying to explain that as well in this webinar, how to look at zoning review in a new light. The second thing that we'd like to uh, tackle in this webinar is to unlearn the current myths about building permits, priorities. Everybody knows what the priorities are and everybody agrees that speed of approvals is an essential element, but nobody agrees on the fact that zoning review, uh, additional element that needs to be thought about. And thirdly, I would specifically show you how zoning review is easy and can streamline your design and construction process. Not only design, not only approval, it's, it's a design process, meaning the schematic design development and the construction document, which is the permit set, all the way to the construction phase and how that little study can affect positively the outcome that be exhibited as a building, as a functional building. Here is the claim. And by this arrow, I don't mean it's equal, it's leads. So zoning review leads to innovative solution. And this is my big claim that I want to make here. And also zoning review, in my view, is an, uh, leads to economic process, approval process. As you know, every single building permit starts with a zoning review. Every single building permit starts with the zoning review anywhere in the world. The authorities has to compare the building design with the bylaws, whether it's a zoning bylaw or later on would be the building bylaws or the building code. So having said that, here is an excerpt where the arrow is pointing uh, from the city of Toronto uh, website. And it says, determine whether your project complies with the zoning. Every property and every project is unique. Before beginning your project, you must know whether the work you plan on doing will comply with the zoning bylaws. And I've included the link to the uh, website where this uh, excerpt has been taken. So the city of Toronto or any municipality in the world would say that first you have to uh, comply with the zoning bylaws. And I'll explain that further down. 
There are two types of zoning uh, review, the zoning certificate review process with the, with the municipality, and there is a preliminary project review. The preliminary project review is a, is a one-time preliminary review, very quick, very fast, and it's not detailed. On the other hand, the zoning certificate review is more detailed and probably happens in cycles uh, of, of corrections and, and improvement. Uh, and it has higher fees, the review fees, and but but they both have the drawings. You have to submit your your intention or design intent in drawings. Uh, there are some reports, uh, different reports that support this uh, approval process, and there are forms to be filled in. I want to draw your attention to this before I talk about other issues were more specific or tailored to the zoning, uh, zoning review, which is a mindset. I want to make the case, and I hope that you agree with me, that to be innovative, you have to think inside of the box, not outside the box. The, the current situation among academia, among the architectural design uh, practice, among even art and uh, and the industry at large, uh, meaning businesses, they always say, think outside the box, think outside the box. But in this webinar, I'd like to make the case that thinking inside the box will make your efforts more innovative. But why does this matter at all in the, in the case of zoning? See, uh, uh, this person is uh, Eris Salik. And he's a business advisor. Uh, he's kind of specialized in innovation. He's saying that constraints lead to innovation. The more constraints you have, the more probability that you can come up with an innovative solution. Innovation, it's, he says, is a solution that provides surprise and value. And that was the, the thing I started with in the first few uh, slides. Innovation design utilizes existing resources, simplicity of solutions, specificity, and the negative element of the problem. So what makes the problem a problem is usually an innovative solution to solve that problem. So this is the surprising element. You've always had this uh, issue or cause to the problem that you thought you have to eliminate. But then what this tells us is that you can take that cause for the problem and turn it into a benefit. I'll explain that further. And in his tech talk, TED talk actually explains that I, I will encourage you to go and listen to his approach to uh, why he thinks constraints lead to innovation. How does this relate to our uh, webinar here about the zoning review? In essence, zoning review is working within the box. Because at the end of the day, the municipality, any municipality, would have a box for you to build within. And that box is imaginary. It's not real. Like the yellow box you see is not real box. It's the limitation of the zoning pilots. And we have to do that. Otherwise, we won't be able to know our limits. You can build a tower. Well, they, they tell you maximum height is 20 meters. You can build an L shape or occupy most of the land while the zone review say FSI or floor space index is only 30%. So you can occupy only 30%. So as you can see, zoning review is a box. And then you have to be creative and find a good solution for your project, for your program within that box, not outside of that box. I'm giving here three examples for you to consider, even though these examples might be a little bit negative, but they teach you some lessons about skipping the zoning review or skipping sometimes the whole permit process is ne neglected. And I don't advise you to do that. So in this example, the client has spent $12,000 on adding or constructing a two-floor addition in his house backyard, as you can see in the, in the, in the 
photo. Uh, municipality then found out, and the inspector came in, looked at the uh, expansion, asked for the permit, and then there was no permit. So he issued a stop work order and gave the uh, owner two months to comply. Then the owner approached us and said, you know, I need a building permit retroactively. So whatever it was built, we have to copy and then apply. We did the zoning review, of course, and we knew that it's not compliant. But we are dealing with a certain situation. We wanted to avoid uh, demolition of the existing. So we did that, hoping that we will go to the Committee of Adjustment so that they can apply for variance. Application, we waited for three months for the, uh, or almost four and a half months, sorry, and, uh, you know, try to, uh, and then we attended. There were three uh, neighbors present at that meeting at the Committee of Adjustment, and they all projected to the expansion and adamantly asked to demolish it. The owner lost $14,712 as he uh, sent me an email, uh, you know, with a lot of frustration. And of course, he couldn't blame the architect. He couldn't blame anyone. He blamed himself for not complying with a very simple yet very effective uh, process. Example number two, and I'm bringing that uh, from another commercial client, uh, uh, also regarding the zoning review. He owns a strip plaza retail, uh, but misunderstanding on his own, the city planner's uh, interpretation or the municipality in that case, uh, planner's interpretation of the zoning bylaw and applied 20% less GFA than it is allowable. So he didn't max out the development. You know, developers, especially of retail, wants to maximize so that they can lease the space and benefit. There's an ROI involved here. Rather than maxing out on the development, he built less 20% because he didn't understand exactly what the floor space index uh, is and hence less building was built. So he had to reapply for zoning review losing almost three months of design costs and valuable time. We were directed to comply with that percentage of development and only then to discover that there is a 20% that could be added and benefited from. Uh, example three about the impact of the zoning review, which is actually our client satisfaction due to our methodology, which is taking care of the zoning review, paying attention to the zoning review, doing it diligently without skipping that uh, phase. So the zoning review help short circuiting the whole process and uh, achieving good results. So th these highlights in yellow explains um, what the uh, these two uh, clients uh, have explained in their uh, testimonials below, solid success rate with the City of Toronto, those permit process. And uh, Mr. Casey says, communicating with and negotiating with the Committee of Adjustment to achieve the approval. So as you can see, negotiation, approval time, and creativity, which which was dealt with uh, in other parts of these testimonials, uh, are all part and parcel doing a zoning review and consider it as the first crucial step to proceed forward. Uh, now I want to discuss with you the myths that surround the whole process, the zoning review in particular. There, the industry doesn't really, in my view, consider the zoning review as part of the design process. And in, for me, this is a myth. Everything that the architect is involved with, even reviewing a bylaw or a piece of uh, a document, it will impact the design decision. Even the demographics, even 
<clears throat> the sociology of accepting the architecture or the neighbors has to do with, with the quality of design. Let's talk about myth number one. Myth number one says, and I'm stating that through my experience, there's no, there's no statistics that talk about myths in the architectural practice or creativity or innovation. But these are, these I experienced firsthand. Myth number one says that zoning review is part of the permit application requirements. What's so new about it? Why are you so concerned about it? Let's do it. Let have, let's have X do it for us. Or let's have a planner do it for us. Or I know this city official who can help us with it. Uh, and uh, as you can see in the last uh, sentence, it says, oh, this is a planner's job. In my view, there are two aspects to answer this. First, the new meaning, the new way, the new as a word is the way we look at zoning, as I explained before, as an important design tool, not just a pre-design phase that must be done. So even though it takes a few days, even though it's, it's cost is not really um, important, but it is, could be, it's a starting point that could lead to good design, efficient design, economic design, innovative design. So that's number one, to refute this uh, myth. Number two is that you can do it yourself in 30 minutes online. You don't have to really go and pay thousands of dollars on it. Or, you know, you don't have, there, there's no specific requirements for you to do it yourself. No matter how intimidating the laws might sound or read, but it's, you can do it. And I have a document, actually, a free document called a step-by-step -step zoning review worksheet that you can obtain from this link. If you cut it and paste it in your browser uh, bar, then you can go and download this document. It, it takes you step by step. And provided you have to understand that this is only for municipalities that has an online zoning map. Myth number two, which is also well spread out in the industry, is the builder's advice. Some builders are really uh, intelligent in that respect, and they know that you know their limitation of work is execution and the design process in is under the architect's uh, uh, authority or responsibility. But there is also this say that, you know, I'm an experienced builder. You don't need it. I tell you, you don't need it. Look at this house, build the same. Or architects complicate things or tend to complicate things. Or zoning review slows down the whole process. Why Why you care? Let's wait for the uh, city uh, zoning notices, and then we comply with them. So they send like 20 notices, and then we start to tweak the design in order to comply. I don't accept that. That's, that's not. Because that will hugely delay the process. And time is money, and then you have to pay more for the design alteration for, to, to renew the design. Lastly, the funny uh, builders advice, one of them is, what is innovative design anyway? Um, this is a, a new terminology. I agree, this is a new ter terminology, but it's getting more and more importance. Innovative, by the way, is also related to sustainability. So sustainable in terms of energy efficiency, uh, using uh, resources that you have uh, intelligently. And it, this is also related to innovation. New, surprising, valuable answer to an existing problem. Uh, myth number two, uh, another uh, testimony from a client. And here I say client or customer or end user or resident or tenant is more important than what you hear from, you know, the noise that surrounds you. 
So listen to what Amos says here. This is best ways to deal with the municipality in order to get my project approved. Deal with municipality. Isn't that zoning review in essence? That you know that you, you follow the zoning review or you know that you breach the zoning review. Full conscious that you're doing that in order to reach to your goal. So myth number three is it's it's a very expensive service. You don't need it, or I don't want to do it. It's uh, it's expensive. Actually, with ISD architects, the expense of this is a small fraction, only a small tiny fraction of the building process design fee. So the design fee. This is only a little bit of. Um, cost to do that service in order for the architect to be creative from day one they start to tailor or integrate that with the program that they received from you and the other aspects the environmental aspects the site specifics the site conditions uh, and of course the zoning files this will yield high design value and return on investment upon selling or renting. Also, this is another quote from a client of mine who's an industrial building owner. Uh, he did an expansion uh, with us and he said, we paid a very minor fee for the zoning review evaluation report and I got 2,000% uh, value back. Uh, he's just exaggerating. This, impossible to measure that value back, but he's trying to say how important that was, the, the, the zoning review was, because it streamlined everything after that. This report made all our design decisions stand on solid grounds. The approval process was predictable and fast, very important. You have to know what the city will answer you. You can predict that. It's not, it's not like a magic, it's, it's, it's bylaws. They read the same bylaws that you read or the arch your architect reads. City officials like it when they know that you're playing by the book. They truly appreciate that because then their response, their time consumed on, on your project will be less. They know that you did your due diligence. So here's our offer to help you with his own interview. However, before that, I can explain more during a session, a free session, that we call needs and options review. Free call with the architect, or in this case with myself. This session is free and it lasts between 15 and 30 minutes. And the main to be honest, the main task or the main conclusion out of this meeting is to know if we could help you, to know if we, we're a good help, uh, fit. And sometimes the clients say, oh, I don't like the architect. Oh, he didn't ask me enough questions. Uh, he wasn't answering my questions, whatever reason. So this meeting is important. And I can't stress enough that you need to meet your architect, whether it's us or any, any other architect because that partnership cannot thrive if there is no um, rapport between the two characters, the two approaches, uh, the, the collaboration would last uh, successfully if you have these ingredients ready and those ingredients would be known within the time frame of 15 to 30 minutes. So what is the outcome of this mission and how it can help you? In this, in this uh, meeting, uh, we would try to clarify your project type. So in, in that sense, are you building new? Are you building an addition? Are you doing an interior alteration? What type of energy uh, conservation do you want to have? Uh, do you want to do a sustainable building, a non-sustainable building, just complying with the code? All of these questions around your project type and also the 
of course, the functionality, the use of the building. Then we move on to the budget questions to understand what's your construction budget. Is it available? Do you have the funds? Are your resources trustworthy? Can you rely on them? All of these questions are uh, revolving around the budget. We'll talk about location of your building. That's obvious. We need to know what municipality is it. And also we talk about the program. The program here means what type of spaces are you looking for or you're looking to build. Sometimes the spaces are not generic. Sometimes the spaces are spe uh, specific with machinery, with certain equipment. Uh, for example, a commercial kitchen, we need the equipment dimensions. We need the uh, equipment uh, uh, drawings, if you have any, or catalogs, or the manufacturer's specification, and so on and so forth. Timeline, when do you want to start construction? This is also important. Sometimes you say, oh, I want to start con construction this fall, or next, uh, next uh, spring, or next summer. All of these have different types of dynamics. And finally, we uh, would like to ask about the character of the building. And the character is so important to us because it really, at the end of the day, architecture is about character that resonates with the owner of that building, of that structure, and the tenants as well. So residential uh, condominium, for example, is different than residential affordable housing. It's different than an office building. It's different than a community center. All of these have different characteristics, sorry, different characters that with an aesthetic value, different aesthetic values it, you want to reveal in your neighborhood, in your street, or largely on the town or the village or the, or the city. In the meeting, we offer free bonuses. And this is also enticing because these two bonuses, I believe, uh, kind of work together with the zoning review to, uh, uh, to promote a good start of the project. So do it yourself zoning review. The one uh, document that I showed a link with, of course, you can download it anytime. Uh, but we'll give that to you also as a PDF copy. And the project planning package, this is another important longer package with different aspects, including budgeting and budgeting for two types. If you want to build a sustainable building and if, or if you want to build just a um, per code building. So whatever the code, SB10 or SB12, requires or if you want to have really a good energy performing building and savings then also we tackle that in the project planning package and we will provide it for free in the session so i'll email it to you besides of course we'll answer any questions you have regarding your project in all of its phases the building permit phase which means the design phase or the construction process. So what's the value of this offer? What's the value of attending this 15, 30 minutes meeting with the architect? There are several values and I'll explain what, which of these is the most important value. Architect, you'll get architect's opinion on your project objectives. You'll get the architect's advice on which design process route is best for you. Where, which direction? It could be three directions. Sometimes you, you freeze one aspect of your project and you move ahead with two. Or you freeze two or you delay two and you move with one, or it's best to move with all your design intention. Uh, number three, you'll get the architect's opinion on potential obstacles. So red flags along the way, the design, uh, the zoning review, there are red flags. Schematic design, there might be red flags. Design development, this is the phase where you start to coordinate with the uh, different consultants. 
not yourself, but the architect, uh, start to give them the design in a semi-final, start to give them the design in its uh, more developed format and start they start to in, uh, put in their uh, systems and their designs and their calculations. So what red flags are in the design development, what red flags would be on the construction document phase, which is the technical drawing with the old dimensions so that the contractor can build it with a minimal supervision from the architect or yourself if you're a project manager. Uh, and lastly, which is the most important part or benefit, is that you will get out of this meeting with a shift in your own perspective about your project. A positive, I would say, a positive shift in your perspective towards your project. You would find it more realistic. You would find it that it could be more valuable than you thought it would. Uh, and this dimension, this light, can uh, only be the result of a very fruitful and uh, lively conversation with the architect. So I really encourage you to do that, not necessarily with us, but you can, you must uh, meet the architect and qualify them. It's like any other people you're dealing with. You have to qualify them to see if you match, if you can work together. But please note <clears throat> that during this meeting, there, there would be no design-specific decisions made, nor there would be a specific information extracted from the design uh, criteria, zoning bylaws, building bylaws. I mean, I could tell you very, very generic, you know, about the means of egress, about uh, setbacks about needing to sign a tree declaration during but I couldn't tell you about your specific situation because simply it requires research and it requires exactly to know what the criteria or what the design is uh, so that we can uh, we can advise you the best way this is a limited time offer as you can imagine, this is a time consuming and um, I'd be busy all the time with the design, do schematic design, checking design documents, doing design, senior design reviews for uh, construction documents, visiting sites and having meetings with my colleagues and with the city officials. So really the, I, ca I cannot do this uh, like an open schedule for it. So I have a one-week calendar that I really encourage you to go and visit in the link below, as you can see it, isdarchitects.youcanbookme.me, and then you can book a slot of 30 minutes time. We can talk over Zoom, or if you want to visit us in the office, you're welcome to do that, or by phone. I would ask you for some certain requirements before you attend the meeting. Like if you have a survey, you have, if you have a sketch of your projects, thing, simple things like that, nothing really out of the ordinary, uh, whatever documents you have, whatever sketches you've done, then we can review it together and I can make the best value out of this. And, there, and, and it's non-obligatory. Please don't feel that you will be obliged to do anything. This is an evaluation meeting as as well an introduction click this link or cut it or type it in url on your uh web page address bar and then uh book an appointment with me um, again it's limited time for a week so i really encourage you to do that now if you want there's no obligation and i assure you you can benefit a lot from this meeting and for us we will be meeting people who are interested to do efficient design, who are interested in do creative design and economic design. Thank you very much for attending this webinar. I hope you found it uh, beneficial and insightful so that you can 
start your project with enthusiasm. Feel free to contact me, book an appointment, and hope to see you on the other side uh, in person, over the phone, or uh, in a Zoom call.